So the M2 rumors have already started to pile in and you know how I feel about rumors. Well, I don't feel that great about them, but the last set of rumors we got on what's coming out with the Mac Studios were actually pretty good. So I'm thinking I'm gonna share with you the source of a lot of these rumors so you can even go sign up for this yourself and get it at the source and skip all the really long videos that people on the YouTube make about these rumors. And then it's just a quick email and then you got the info. So I get this Bloomberg technology power on by Mark Gurman. You can just go to Bloomberg, sign up for this technology column. It comes right to your inbox. And Mark Gurman is one of the sources, if not the main source that uh, has all these rumors. He's got some inside connections with Apple. A lot of his stuff is right, but a lot of it is also wrong. So take this with a grain of salt. I want to share with you the last email I just got on Monday of this week. And he's talking about the review of the Mac Studio. This came out after the Apple event on March 8th. And he's also taking an in-depth look at what he thinks the M2 will look like. I'll skip all the uh, Mac Studio stuff. I got one coming, so I'll do a reviews on those. I wanted to get to the M2 stuff because that's a little bit interesting here. Oh, uh, one more thing he says here is that some viewers think that there will be no new iMac Pro. I was one of those viewers, yes. I even made a video on that. But he thinks that there will be an iMac Pro with the chips on par with the MacBook Pro or the Mac Studio. So in other words, the maybe even the M1 Pro chip, M1 Max chip, or the M1 Ultra chip inside a new iMac. So he thinks there's a product that's still to come called a new iMac of some sorts. But he doesn't think that the iMac or the new Mac Pro are coming anytime soon. Why? Well, because he says that the Mac Pro is probably gonna have the next iteration of the Apple Silicon chip and it doesn't exist as a product yet. So they're gonna first develop the new M2 chip and then they're gonna go and uh, release the M1 Pro with that chip in it. Now, if you've seen the keynote, they show the picture of what they call Ultra Fusion. That's the um, two M1 Max chips fused together. And that was designed that way because each chip had a die with the interpose already built in. So all they needed to do was just connect those. And there you have an M1 Ultra chip. However, there is no other place to put more chips on it. So that's where the M2 might come in. This is just my own guessing here is that maybe the M2 will have two of those interposer slots for more chips to connect to each other. Now he also goes here to say that Apple could roll out a Mac Pro with an M1 Ultra as well as a dual M1 Ultra without giving a new chip a new name. In other words, M2. But if that's the case, then they can just do it right now. Why not do it at WWDC? Maybe they will. He says the other possibility is that Apple is holding off on the new M Mac Pro until the M2 Ultra and the dual M2 Ultra are ready. And he says, let's call that double M2 Ultra and the M2 Extreme. We know what happened last year with the M1X. So I'm gonna refrain from calling it the M2 Extreme because that's probably not gonna be the name. He says, here are the expectations of the next set of chips, okay? M2, direct replacement for the M1, eight core CPU with nine or 10 graphics cores. I wonder how that chip is gonna compare with the M1 Max and the M1 Pro and the M1 Ultra. It's gonna have to have significantly better single core performance in order to be uh, to beat it, basically. The single core is what we're gonna be looking at here. So as far as software developers go, that's gonna be important for a, a number of applications, JavaScript, your IDEs most likely are gonna be using single cores to do all the interactions. So how you get around your development environment, things like that. Then the M2 Pro is gonna be a 12 CPU core and 16 graphics cores, M2 Max, M2 Ultra, and the M2 Extreme with 48 cores and 96 and 128 graphic cores. That's pretty extreme. I can see where the name could come from, but I still don't think that's gonna be the name. So the reasoning behind why he says that the Mac Pro won't launch until the M2 line is ready is because the low power M2 Max are likely to hit before the first Mac Pro. And then he goes to say, I am told, I'm told that there will be two or three new Macs launched around the middle of the year middle of the year being around WWDC time and he's told makes me think well who's telling him this stuff is it somebody that works at Apple who knows what they're talking about or is it some runt who's getting fed information that's the wrong information so they can 
fire that person later for leaking this stuff. Some kind of scapegoat. I don't know how these rumors work or get passed along. I'm too far down the totem pole to even know anything. I just get my news from Bloomberg. The M2 version of the MacBook Air, Mac Mini, and the 13-inch MacBook Pro, and the 24-inch iMac, all the ones that have the M1 chip in it now, are going to be coming out in the next few months. And the one that I'm really excited about is that MacBook Air with the M2 chip because the MacBook Air... Where's my MacBook Air? It's, it's somewhere. The MacBook Air has been has been such a beautiful little machine. I still use mine. And if you have that machine, good for you, because I think that that's been the best release from Apple in the last two years, that MacBook Air. And I think Apple kind of screwed up by releasing such a powerful machine in tiny package like the MacBook Air. They should have released the M1 half for the Air and then saved the M1 for its more bigger machines like the MacBook Pro, but that's for them to decide, I guess. All right, then he talks about the display. We'll talk about that another time. So I just wanted to let you know about what's in the air right now. Hopefully this video is not gonna be long after I do the edit. And I also wanted to let you know about that uh, source so you can potentially save yourself from watching hours and hours of YouTube videos that basically amount to rumors and nothing else. All right, folks, if you found this useful, I'd appreciate you hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. I'll see you next time.